Well, good morning and welcome to the Lebanon Rock Church online worship and message for this Sunday, August the 28th, 2022. I'm Pastor Matt Skiles. We're so glad that you've taken time to join with us this morning as we gather together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ and to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. We trust that this morning's praise and worship and music was a blessing to you and that you were blessed and were able to enter into worship. Now we're going to hear the message from God's word. And as always, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, ask God to bless the message we're about to hear. But also, we're going to ask you to take your burdens and your cares and your needs and requests to the Lord as well. Because the Lord knows what you have need of even before you kneel down and pray. So join with me as we go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing on the remainder of the service today. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity that we have to come together this morning here in this online gathering and online setting and worship together. Lord, we thank you for the praise and worship music that we heard this morning. And Lord, we thank you for your blessings upon our lives. We pray that you'll meet every individual need that we have. We pray for those that are sick and afflicted, those that are in the hospital, the nursing homes, those that are in need of healing. We pray for physical healing to manifest and to bring forth the power of the Holy Spirit in the physical bodies that we have need of healing right now. Father, we pray for our material and financial needs. We pray for those that are struggling, God, in these economic times right now. We pray for you to bless, administer, and meet every need. We pray for our lost family members and loved ones and friends and family. We also pray, Father, that you'll just minister to each and every one of us, that we will draw closer to you, and that this morning's message will challenge us and encourage us. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we give you thanks and praise. Bless the remainder of the service, we pray, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we ask all these things. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, you have your tablets, your smartphones, whatever your Bible app is this morning, go with me to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, chapter number 21. And we're going to be reading verses 15 through 17. I'll give you a moment to find that. And just to give you a little bit of a foundation to build upon this message this morning, uh, this is the story of Jesus appearing to his disciples on the seashore after his resurrection. And Simon Peter and the other disciples are out fishing after the death of Jesus Christ. So I've titled this message this morning, Do You Love Me? Do You Love Me? I think that's a question the Lord would ask all of us this morning. So John chapter 21, we're going to begin reading at verse 15, going all the way down to verse number 17. And this, of course, is the gathering on the seashore. Jesus has prepared a fire and coals and fish, and they're eating breakfast this morning that Jesus has appeared unto them. And this is where we pick it up. In verse 15, all the way down to verse number 17, and whatever translation Bible you're using this morning is going to be more than useful for this morning's message. Verse 15 of John 21. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Now in our text here, Jesus says, as I said a moment ago, is risen from the dead. He's appeared unto the disciples, and this is the time he appears on the seashore and performs another miracle. So when he appears, the disciples are taking it all in. And on this day, after helping the seven disciples catch 153 fish, and then having breakfast and breaking bread with them, during the time of the meal, Jesus asked Peter this question. He says, do you love me? Now, the King James Version says, lovest thou me? But the New King James Version, Jesus says, do you love me? Peter needs restoration because 
when it was time to stand up for Jesus, he stood down. And when it was time to admit that he was a follower of Jesus Christ, he denied that he even knew Jesus three times, just as Jesus had prophetically told him the night that he was betrayed, that before the cock crowed, he would deny he knew Jesus three times. <clears throat> and to make it worse, not only had he denied Jesus three times, but in the heat of the moment when Jesus was arrested and taken into custody by not only the Romans, but also the Jewish Sanhedrin and the religious leaders, uh, as they were taking Jesus away, Peter took out his fisherman's knife and cut off the ear of the high priest's servant. So you see the hostility and anger and lack of judgment that Peter shows. But he has made an, uh, just an absolutely horrific mistake, not once, but four times. And so, you know, when Jesus approaches Peter on the seashore, and Peter recognizes that it's Jesus. They, of course, catch the fish. Then they make their way to the shore. And there they see Jesus welcoming them and bringing them to the place where he has the fire, the fish, the coals, and they prepare to eat a meal together. And it is there that Jesus asks Simon Peter three different times this question, Do you love me? You see, the issue was love. Did Peter really love Jesus? And I ask you this question this morning. Do we really love Jesus? Do you really love Jesus? Jesus taught us these words in Mark 12 and verse number 30. Jesus said, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. That's the greatest and first commandment in the word of God, that we are to love God with all of our heart. And so the question that Jesus asks us is the same question he asked Peter that day on the shore. Do you love me? Because a lot of people in today's church culture claim to love Jesus. They claim to serve Jesus. They claim to be a follower of Jesus. They claim to want to be a part of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. But they really don't love Jesus like they say they do. How do I know that? Because you look at the idolatry that is so rampant and pervasive in our culture today. People make idols out of many things. And people put other things before Jesus Christ. That's why the greatest commandment that was given to Moses when he came down off of Mount Sinai and God gave him the Ten Commandments for the nation of Israel and for the children of Israel to follow, the very first commandment was, you shall have no other gods before me. And here Jesus is wanting to see where Peter stands in this particular moment. This is a critical moment in the life of Peter. He has denied Jesus three times. And Jesus asks him, do you love me? Not once, not twice, but three times. He asks him, do you love me? And of course, that wonderful act of restoration on the part of the Lord Jesus Christ is not only a wonderful story and illustration to the body of Christ of what he can do in the life of Peter and what he did in the life of Peter, but what he can do in our life as well. God loves us more than we could ever begin to understand. The psalmist even talks about how he has loved us with an everlasting love. His mercy endures forever. But I ask you this morning, do you love Jesus? And Jesus is asking us the question, which is the title of this message. Do you love me? So the first point we want to unpack this morning and convey to you as we begin to go through the message this morning is this question. Does your love for Christ place him above all others? Now, in verse number 15, go back and look at John 21 and 15. It reads, So when they had dined, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, Do you love me more than these? Let me read the King James Version of that too. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, Lovest thou me more than these? Now this is Jesus' third appearance to his disciples in a resurrected form. 
The disciples just witnessed another miraculous event when Jesus supplied fish for their catch. And part of the catch was used probably for breakfast, and then Christ began to probe Peter with this pointed question, Do you love me? We must remember that it was Peter who claimed that he would never forsake Jesus Christ, even if all others might and would even die with him if he needed to. He said that in Matthew 26 and verse 35, and in Mark 14, verses 27 through 31. And in Matthew's account, in Matthew 30, 26 and verse 35, Peter boldly said he was ready to die for Christ, to die with Christ. But you see, when the pressure came and the rubber meets the road, and it's time to put up or shut up, Peter failed. And so, when Peter denied even knowing Jesus Christ, it brought shame and heartbreak to his life. In fact, the Bible says when he heard uh, the rooster crow, he remembered the words of Jesus and he went out from them and he wept bitterly. He was humiliated and defeated and he was destroyed. And if you look at Luke chapter 14, verses 26, and then also look at verse number 33, these words uh, are so important. And Jesus says, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. You see, does our love for Christ place him above all others? Is there anything in our life that keeps us from loving Jesus Christ? Is there anything that keeps us from having a deeper, closer, more intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it a hobby? Is it a pastime? Is it a pursuit that we have? Is it the love of money? Uh, is it your family, your marriage, your spouse, your career? Is it possessions that you have? Is it things that you actively enjoy? Now, I'm a, I'm a health nut. I work out six days a week. I have a home gym in my garage, and I also have a gym membership. You might be thinking I'm overdoing it, but uh, I use one gym for working my legs and another gym at home for working my upper body. But you know what? That's a, a pastime that I enjoy. But I never let my, my, my working out and my exercise schedule and regimen ever supersede my time with Christ. And even when I am working out and even when I am exercising, I'm listening to gospel sing, gospel teaching, praise and worship music. Uh, I'm, I'm putting the word of God in my heart and in my mind, and I'm trying my best to draw closer to the Lord, even as I'm trying to keep myself healthy and be a good steward of my physical body. But that should never supersede my relationship with Jesus Christ. And if that is a case, then we need to examine our hearts. And as Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 says, we need to lay aside the weights and the sin which doth so easily beset us. There are things that can beset us and keep us back from drawing closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to be mindful of that as we answer the question this morning, do you love me? The second point we want to convey this morning is this. <clears throat> When Christ asks you for commitment and faithfulness, do you respond with feelings? Go back, if you would, and look at verse 15 and verse 16. Again, verse number 15, again, So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? And notice the answer that Simon Peter gives him. In verse number 15 and in verse number 16, Yea, Lord, Thou knowest that I love thee. He answers with a rather emotional answer. To fully understand this passage here, though, we as readers and students of the Word of God must see the difference between the question that Jesus asks and the response that Simon Peter gives him. When Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me more than these? He was using a specific word denoting a specific type of love. The word Christ used in the Greek text is agape. That word represents the sacrificial, selfless love and total commitment 
that is seen. You love someone enough to give your life. You love someone enough that you put them above yourself. That's the agape love, the self-sacrificing love that Jesus demonstrated for us on the cross. And that embraces, as a matter of principle, duty, and, and propriety, uh, what we have to do for Christ. Jesus was asking Peter if he was willing to sacrifice and give everything completely to him. However, Peter replies in another way, thou knowest that I love thee. That sounds like a positive response, but it really isn't when you think about it. Because what Jesus was desiring from Peter when describing this love, Peter uses a different kind of love. See, Peter was uh, stating the word phileo. This word defined means fondness, to have an affection for, to have a personal attachment to. Uh, it was a matter of sentiment and feeling. Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Do you love me with an agape love? Are you willing to sacrifice and give all for me? Are you willing to surrender everything for me? Do you love me enough to die for me, to serve me, to follow me, uh, to give up everything for me? Whereas Peter thought he asked him, do you love me as a friend? Do you love me as your Lord? So Peter was saying, yes, Lord, you know I love you. You know I have a fondness for you. You know what you mean to me as my Lord and my Master. See, Peter was misinterpreting the question. Jesus said, do you love me? Saying, Peter, do you love me enough to sacrifice and give me that agape love, not the phileo love? And many times when we come to situations in our Christian life where we have to make decisions and we have to sacrifice and we have to do what is not, what is not pleasant, what is not easy, and what is not even popular, that is agape love. When the Apostle Paul wrote about love in 1 Corinthians 13, he was talking about agape love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love is not rude. It keeps no record of wrongs, um, thinks no evil. Uh, you know, uh, those, those type of characteristics that you read about that I'm paraphrasing from 1 Corinthians 13 are, are attributes of agape love. And that's what Peter was, uh, was being asked by Jesus. Peter, do you love me? Do you love me enough to sacrifice? Do you love me enough to give me everything? Do you love me enough to give me your life, to give me your commitment, your devotion? Because there are different types of love. The phileo love is that fondness, companionship, friendship love. Peter had that for Jesus. But Peter didn't realize Jesus wanted a total commitment from him. That's why Jesus asked him three times in this wonderful act of restoration. Restoring Peter to uh, to. The, the place of being a disciple, but also seeking to reach deep down into the recesses of Peter's heart and see if he truly loved him. <clears throat> you know, John Holcomb was once quoted as saying, you must get involved to have an impact. No one is impressed with the one loss record of the referee. You have to get your hands dirty and you have to get involved and you have to be willing to sacrifice. You can't answer the call of God with emotion. You can't uh, make excuses for God. When the Lord calls us and when the Lord commands that we give him commitment, we respond with agape love, which is a self-sacrificing, um, you know, selfless kind of love that puts others ahead of ourselves. When the Apostle Paul speaks of esteeming others higher than ourselves, he's speaking of agape love. And the third point this morning, third point this morning, and our final point, is does your service for Christ mirror the words of your commitment? Verse number 17 of John 21, after Jesus asked him a third time, when he said, Simon, Thou son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. 
Peter at this point was very aware that Jesus knew the intentions of his heart. And three times Jesus gave Peter a command to serve. Jesus also knows the intentions of your heart. He knows your motives, your mindset, your attitude, your thought process. He knows where our loyalties lie. The third time Jesus asked this question of Peter, he used Peter's word for love that signified something less than total devotion. Questioning even that level of love Peter thought he was claiming to have. The lessons that are driven home to Peter at this particular point grieved him in his heart to the point that he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And I ask you this morning, are we serving Christ as a loyal, dedicated, totally committed child of God? Or do we serve him only if it is convenient for us to do so? We need to look at our hearts. There may be something that we need to grieve about. Because, you know, Hebrews 12 and 28 tells us, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Jesus asked the question of Peter, do you love me? Do you love me more than these? The Lord is asking the church of 2022, do you love me? Where is your loyalty? Where is your commitment? Do you have that agape love for me and are you willing to serve me? Because I have witnessed and I have observed over the last 24 months, actually even longer than that, probably close to the last two and a half years, since February of 2020 when the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic hit our nation and shut down our country, you know, uh, it uh, splintered our economy and uh, brought our whole American way of life to a halt. I think one of the sad, sad residual effects of that whole COVID-19 pandemic was the effect that it had on the church. You see, people got comfortable. People got comfortable sitting at home. People got comfortable listening to an online service like we're doing here. Now, please don't misunderstand or misinterpret what I'm saying. I know that certain people can't get to church or don't have the ability or the availability to be in church. So we offer online services for people that are sick, that are home, that are, that are shut in, that are hospitalized, that can't be here. And we're grateful for every viewer we have. But it is important that we realize that the church was never meant to, to, to be away. The church was never intended to not be a fellowship. That's why the Bible tells us in the scriptures, forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together, and so much the more as you see that day approaching. And so over the last probably two and a half years since February of 2020, and now we are here, um, we're, we're talking now on August the 28th, 2022, we can see the residual effects of what that pandemic did on the church. People have become comfortable staying home. And being comfortable staying at home has led to a mindset of complacency. And a mindset of complacency has then given way to a carnal mindset. And now we are just living carnally and not really serving Christ like we should. It's so much easier to just lay in bed and get on your phone and listen to an online service as opposed to being in the house of God, worshiping together, and glorifying and lifting up the name of Jesus and fellowshipping and being with God's people. But more than that, I really truly believe that many Christians don't love Jesus like they claim to. I don't know how many times people tell me how much they love God, how much they serve God, but yet their life, the fruit that they bear, their lifestyle that they exhibit, their day-to-day -day activity of life does not indicate that they are serving Christ or that they love Jesus Christ. I can only imagine uh, what my wife or what our spouses would think if we, never, if we told them that we loved them, but we never put that love into action. 
if we did not express that love in words of affirmation, if we did not express that love in acts of service, if we did not express that love uh, in physical touch and intimacy, if we didn't give them gifts and do things for them and, and, and encourage them and spend quality time with them. You know, there is a wonderful book out, Five Love Languages, and I've, I give that to every couple that I marry. And I encourage them to read it because you know what? If you don't have love in a marriage, the relationship will falter and will fail. And each of those five love languages are used to convey love. Well, we convey love to Jesus Christ in our praise, in our worship, in our prayer, in the study of the Word of God, in worship in His house. The Lord is asking you and asking me today, do you love me? Do you love me? Do we love the Lord enough? To give him everything. Give him what's right and not simply what's left. I believe that we're coming into a time, we're coming into a period in the history and the life of the church where the Lord is going to command and demand total commitment. There will be an end time harvest. There will be a great move of God before the coming of the Lord. And I believe God is preparing his church and he's preparing his remnant. And he's preparing his body to do such a work. But he is not going to work and operate or move through people that don't love him. So I encourage you to check your heart this morning. And I ask you this morning, do you love Jesus? Are you totally devoted to Christ in every area of your life? Could you possibly be a crisis Christian? When a crisis comes, you turn to Christ. But when the crisis is over... Christ is no longer as important as he once was. Perhaps you're a prosperity Christian. As long as things are going well, as long as there's a steady paycheck, as long as there's food on the table, as long as God is blessing and prospering me, I'm going to serve him. But what about whenever things aren't going well? Trials and tribulations come. Setbacks hit us and we deal with financial issues. Are we still going to love him and serve him? You see, if you don't totally, totally devote yourself to Christ, you can never truly love him. But praise God, we can make that change today. We can choose to love the Lord and love him with that agape love. That is a sacrificial, selfless love that puts all others ahead of ourselves. And we can be like Christ when we love like Christ and when we love Christ. So why don't we do that this morning? Praise God. Bow your heads with me as we offer a word of prayer in closing this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we've had to hear this message from your word this morning. Father, we thank you for the privilege to just gather in this online worship and be a part of this wonderful service today. Father, we thank you for each one that's tuned in and been a part of this online audience. We pray that you'll bless them, prosper them, and keep them in health, even as their soul prospers. Father, bless us this week. Father, help us as we go into this next week in our lives to truly, truly love you with a pure heart fervently, to love you with a, with a selfless, sacrificial love, demonstrating that agape love for you that will be seen in our commitment and our devotion to you. Father, help the body of Christ to draw closer to you, just as James 4 and 8 says, draw near to God, and you will draw near to us. Father, we thank you for each and every one that's gathered here today. Bless us and be with us. Bring us back at the next time we're appointed in time to meet together, and bless us with a great week and a good day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining with us today and being a part of this online worship and message. And from all of us here at Lebanon Rock Church, we say thank you for being with us. God bless you and have a great week. And we look forward to having you with us again next time.